Space ain't what it used to be, mainly because just like here on Earth, we are slowly filling the most important part, just above us, with junk. Over 60 years of space travel, flight debris or space junk has accumulated around the Earth to the point where it's now becoming dangerous. With the amount of space junk in orbit expected to triple within the next 15 years, experts are beginning to take the problem very seriously indeed. Because if they don't, a theory known as the Kessler syndrome suggests that the space around the Earth could soon become so clogged with space junk that no vehicle will be able to fly through it. That means no more missions to the Moon or Mars, no more deep space probes, and closer to home and more importantly for everyday people like you and me, no more satellite communications networks, weather satellites and research probes, live international news, stock price updates, flight information or GPS services. We could imprison ourselves on Earth and make the world a lot smaller and more difficult to navigate and understand while we do it. When space exploration began, there was no way of dealing with the vehicles once they had completed their jobs. So they were just left there, floating around the Earth of no further use to anyone. But as the pattern continued over the decades, more and more debris built up, and now it's a real problem. Objects from spacecraft to specks of dust stay in orbit because they are traveling at incredibly high speeds, normally in the order of around 17,000 miles an hour, 27,000 kilometers per hour. It's not all that bad if they're all traveling in the same direction, like cars on the same side of a highway. But if the orbits are different and at different angles and directions, then it's like a car driving into oncoming traffic. The impact speeds are huge, and so is the energy released when they collide. A one centimeter or half inch fleck of paint around the size of a fingernail, traveling at a typical collision speed of 22,000 miles an hour, 35,000 kilometers an hour, has the same impact potential as an object weighing 550 pounds or 250 kilograms, traveling at 60 miles an hour or 96 kilometers here on Earth. A 10 centimeter or four inch object has the impact energy of around seven kilograms of TNT. The Space Surveillance Network is currently tracking more than 750,000 pieces of junk, of which 16,000 are 10 centimeters in diameter or larger, whilst most of them are between one and 10 centimeters. But there are thought to be more than 150 million pieces smaller than a centimetre. Over the 5,000 vehicle flights or so since 1957, rocket flights have created clouds of aluminium dust from engines. Nuclear-powered satellites have created droplets of coolant liquid, and radio experiments from the 1960s have left strands of copper wire floating around. At the larger end of a scale, the junk includes defunct satellites, empty rocket stages, discarded shields, and even lens caps. The oldest known item still in orbit is NASA's Vanguard 1 satellite and its upper stage launch rocket, which was launched in 1958. In 2002, an unidentified item was found to be a burnt out stage from the Apollo 12 moon mission launched in 1969. It was identified by the paint patterns on its exterior and paint, which it turns out, is also a significant issue in the space junk situation. Flecks of paint become detached from the dead vehicles as a result of the extreme ultraviolet radiation. Although they're tiny, they're traveling at around five miles per second, and that means they can pack a serious punch if they hit anything. Several space shuttle windows needed replacing after being hit by what was later identified to be paint flecks. A solar array removed from the Hubble Space Telescope in 1993 showed hundreds of tiny impact holes. Last year, a piece of micro debris cut a hole in the solar panel of a Copernicus Sentinel-1A satellite. And in May 2017, astronaut Tim Peake revealed how a paint fleck, believed to be just a few thousandths of a millimeter in diameter, made a serious dent in the cupola window of the International Space Station. The ISS can be moved out of position if an impact is predicted. NASA flight rules include guidelines for assessing the threat posed by space debris. They know that pieces of junk moving up to 17,500 miles an hour pose a serious threat to vehicles and anyone aboard. An imaginary box known as the pizza box because of its shape is projected around the ISS and any other vehicles. It's a mile deep, 30 miles wide and 30 miles long. 
and if any pieces of space junk enter the pizza box area, NASA and its partners do what has to be done to protect the vehicle and its crew if there are any on board. There have actually been very few large-scale collisions to date, but for an idea of what does happen when they occur, consider this. In 2007, China tested an anti-satellite weapon by destroying a defunct probe with a rocket. That explosion created the largest breakup in space history, adding a further 3,000 new trackable pieces of space junk around the planet. Two years later, in 2009, a dead Russian probe struck and destroyed an operating US commercial communications satellite, creating a further 2,000 more tiny bits of debris. The Kessler syndrome, as defined by Professor Don Kessler of NASA in 1978, predicts that these sort of impacts will become more and more common and create more and more tiny, non-trackable bits of junk to clog up the space around the Earth. The theory goes that as time goes by, large objects will smash into other large objects and break up into smaller ones. With so much junk for these smaller bits to hit, a chain reaction could be set off that ends up with billions of tiny pieces too small to be tracked, making it impossible to leave Earth without encountering an impact. In essence, the Kessler syndrome warns that we could lock ourselves into a world where we can't send up satellites or rockets because there's no way through this invisible junkyard. So what is being done? Government space agencies and corporate operators are working together in the Interagency Space Debris Coordination Committee. They've developed guidelines about limiting space junk. The current thinking is that the problem of the micro debris can't be solved. So organizations must work to prevent the vehicles from having the chance of smashing into other things and creating the junk in the first place. Future satellite networks and space stations are expected to have a maximum orbital lifetime of 25 years, after which they are either sent into the atmosphere to burn up or moved into a higher graveyard orbit well out of the way. But what about the current situation? Well, the Earth does have a self-cleaning function to an extent. Every 11 years, the solar cycle increases the amount of energy received by the Earth from the Sun. This heats up the lower parts of the atmosphere, which expand outwards, creating higher air drag, which in turn causes debris in the lower orbits to slow down and then fall back to Earth to burn up. Although this doesn't last for long as it's replaced by objects descending from higher orbits. The problem here is that we are filling up space faster than the Earth can clean up our rubbish. In 2013, NASA said they aimed to concentrate on mitigation of the problem because there was no practical method of debris removal. They proposed a problem called Space Debris Elimination, or SPADE. This would shoot pulses of atmospheric gas at targets, which would destabilize their orbits and force them to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and burn up. NASA argued that the SPADE system would be fail-safe because the gas pulses would just fade back into the atmosphere, leaving no additional junk in the place of the junk that had just been removed. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency is working on its own solution. Agreeing that the problem of the micro debris can't be solved, they're also going after the larger pieces. ESA are working on a machine called the ED Orbit, which would use a net or robotic arm to capture large bits of junk and drag them towards the atmosphere, where both the Hunter machine and the piece of junk would burn up. The first launch of ED Orbit is expected to happen in 2023. If the chain reaction predicted by the Kessler syndrome theory ever began, we could find ourselves trapped within the confines of the Earth's atmosphere until a way was found to clean up the billions of tiny but deadly pieces of space junk. Human ingenuity suggests that we would be able to solve a problem if we had to, but it makes much more sense to find a solution before the Kessler syndrome cascade occurs. How long we've got to do this is anybody's guess. And in the meantime, with more and more nations joining the space race, and more than 100 vehicle launches every year, and that figure is set to increase, the problem is only going to get worse. So as always, thanks for watching, and before I go, I'd just like to remind you of the Curious Droid merchandise store, and also the Curious Droid Facebook group, where you can suggest ideas for new videos, and finally, you can translate any of the Curious Droid videos if you're a non-native English speaker, with the community contributions, which we have a video on if you're unsure in the uploaded videos. So once again, Thanks for watching and please subscribe, rate and share.